Well, I don't know what you'd expect it, so uh, please bear with me. And you'll never realise how intimidating it is to be in front of 200 professionals who present every day of their lives. Normally what I'm presenting to people is, okay, answer, how much is this going to cost us? Let's get to the pound notes. But you guys, this is going to be different. So I apologise for my presenting <coughs> style. It's completely homegrown, right? Um, we've got about half an hour or something. Uh, I, this talk can last 10 minutes, it could last 40 minutes. I'd like questions. I want you to challenge me, right? Or ask me, why am I saying that? Why does industry want that? Where do you get, well, don't have to worry about the stats because they're all made up as most stats are, right? <laughs> so just, just ask me, right? I, 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 love the, I like interactive, we'll get, we'll get more out of it as interactive, right? So don't worry about stopping me or asking me questions or stuff like that, okay? No <coughs> issue. Quick agenda, oh, good power, death by four points have agendas. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about me, why I'm interested in this topic. Uh, revolutions. We're in the middle of a thing I call the digital revolution. I want to talk a little bit about that. What are the issues I see, and I think I'm going to talk about issues that I think you guys might have or education has, what industry needs, where the opportunities are. Okay, and we've got QA at the end, but I say just just launch into questions. Um, if you've got any. So me, yeah, I graduated from Glasgow University in 1979, so I'm probably older than nearly everybody else in this room. I did computer science. Legend has it, we were the seventh year to graduate in computer science. And I'm hugely passionate about IT, right? I've had, 30, I've had a career of 34 years and hopefully even longer. Um, really like what I do, it's been, it's been brilliant for me. Um, I'm also the Vice Chair of Scotland IS, which is the trade body for IT uh, companies in Scotland, and I'm a member of the Intellect Board, which is the IT companies in the UK, right? So I try and put a little bit more back into helping IT do a bit more. I've managed to get a couple of questions asked in the Scottish Parliament about IT skills in Scotland and the lack of them. The IT industry in Scotland, depending on where you, where you, where you get your figures from, employs between 56 and uh, 90,000 people, right? There are a lot of people out there. We've got 2,000 graduates a year. We're short of four, we need 4,000 a year to keep, to keep the industry going, right? Um, the demographics are getting worse. There's more people like me in, in this industry. We've got less young people coming into it. The diversity, is worse as well, and I'm going to repeat some of these things that go through the talk. We've got 22% women in IT. We need to change this. This is mental, right? We're missing out on 50% of the population to get these people in IT. And a lot of that, I think, comes from the schools, and I'll talk about that later. I, I work for, well, I know, since eight, uh, I used to work for um, uh, a more group, I still do. We were bought six weeks ago by a, a massive American organization. So um, we're based out in India, but it's a beautiful old building on the AE just behind Glasgow Airport. Uh, as I said, I've worked in IT all my life, and I, and I work for a massive organization that delivers all the Royal Mail things, and we manage over four, in fact, I think it's 57% of um, the public sector spend in Scotland goes through some of our systems. So I know, I do think, I, I think I do know a lot about IT, and I'm just, I just want to keep that going and get more people involved. So why this? Well, yes, these are all great things, right? We want to identify what we need. We need to take responsibility to progress the next generation of IT experts. That's the big thing, right? Um, I mentioned the number of students that aren't coming into the industry. Uh, in my first year, there was 128 in my first year class, right? And I know there was one of the universities in Scotland last year had 125 <coughs> people in their first year class. So my first year class in 1975, 2012, same number, in fact, three less. That's just crazy. We're, as I said, we're in the middle of a digital revolution. 
computing is pervasive. It's all throughout the it's all throughout our lives. Everything we do now, the, the changes since 1979 to now is unbelievable. <coughs> I was talking to somebody at lunchtime today that you know software's gone from Neanderthal to, to digital with no no civilization in between. Every other industry has had 2,000, 3,000 years. You know, bridges. You know, a tree fell across a stream and people re realized you could use it as a bridge, and now we build suspension bridges and all that sort of thing. Software's just gone like that, right? And it's changing rapidly. And it, it's, as I say, if you switch on your phones, I think there's at least three or four wireless things we can pick up in here. Everybody's got wireless in their homes, though I guess Glasgow is slightly different. We've got quite, quite a low uptake of broadband, but certainly mobile technology. These things, sorry, so my pocket turned off. These things have got more power. Than, it's just incredible amount of power and the number of apps and, and things like that people do. We've got to get, you know, Scotland is a, a brilliant place. We've had a fantastic engineering background, right? And we could be doing exactly the same with IT. We could be exporting IT just like, like uh, Springburn uh, put out uh, um, steam engines all those years ago. We should be getting more out of what we do. We've got fabulous universities, fabulous schools, and we've got great indigenous companies. Let's get going with it. Sorry. So that's part of it. That's part of it. <laughs> so I told you, sorry, I just get, I get too kept up about it sometimes, right? So I mentioned. We've had the industrial revolution, the three hours of people wanted, it's now the digital revolution, we've got to get on board this, otherwise we're just going to get lost, right? And it's a massive impact on society, we just have to get to grips with it, right? There's a lack of new blood coming into our, our industry. I mentioned the, the lack of diversity. We're like, I actually did a survey of, of my company, we have, we've got 27% uh, women, which is 5% more than, than the average. So I was quite happy with that, but still, you know, 27%, you could easily double it and things like that, right? And we really need to, we really need to, really need to fix the, 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 the demographics. It's a great industry. Um, the average salary we worked out, I think we worked out in Scotland, the average salary in, uh, for an IT person is about uh, 40,000 pounds or something like that, right? And you start, and that's including graduates who come in at Things like uh, 23, 25,000. And I heard, I heard uh, this year like, that there was one company off, was offering their graduates 30,000 uh, pounds a year to start in the central belt of Scotland. It was pretty unheard of. It's a fabulous industry. We need to get more people involved. So, why do I? Well, I had a look at the CAS conference last year, and there were quite a few issues came up, and I think, I think some of them are still there. There's a massive confusion between what ICT is and computing. Um, I know my, uh, my youngest child, my daughter, she's in sixth year just now, so I know they've gone through schools uh, and the two older boys were completely put off because they were taught how, what Access was and what Excel was and what Word is, right? They can do that in seconds at home, right? But they know nothing about computing. They haven't a clue what my job is, right? They have no idea. I couldn't get them. I couldn't get my kids. I run, a, I run a, a department of 150 developers and I couldn't get my kids to go into IT because they were completely turned off in school. So that's where our problem is and we need to fix that somehow, right? And it's like, have you ever seen any child with five E's? Have ever, they ever asked you how to do computing? No. It's, do you want to do medicine? Do you want to do law? Do you want to do, I mean, you know, it just drives me nuts, right? We need, we need to get these sort of, that sort of level of, of person in to computing. I'll come on later about the, the, the opportunities we have in, in, in this industry. They're just fabulous, right? And we need to get people to understand what we can do, right? Um, and the, the stat that scared me the, lot, the, lot, the, the most was the, the bottom one, right? I think there's 27% of schools in Scotland don't teach computing, right? And my daughter's school uh, doesn't, at least at a higher level, sorry, right? And, you know, what can we do to help? I think industries out there, it's, 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 you know, do we put pressure on the government? We're trying to. Scotland DIS is doing that. We, we have qu um, quarterly or you know, three times a year, every four months we meet with um, uh, MSPs and ministers and explain what the situation is and how we need um, more people, how, how we need to improve the skill set and get, you know, get people more digitally aware. 
and how, how fantastic the image is and how much it employs and all that sort of thing, but you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. There's, there's, obviously, there's a lack of money and things like that. But I do think, perhaps it goes back to the first point, even perhaps the you know, local authorities don't understand the difference between ICT and computing. If you think you're teaching Word or something like that, then that's the same thing. And hopefully, we all know it's not. Uh, so, so, I think Kaz mentioned this this year. Uh, I think it's the same thing. Reduction in the number of pupils choosing because there's not enough computing teachers. It would be great if the industry could somehow help with that and build up uh, the number of computing teachers. I, feel, I do feel sorry for, for you guys if you've got to teach computing, right? Because the pace of change in our industry is incredible, right? And I'm sitting in the industry, right? And I can see the stuff that comes up. I was at a conference two, uh, last year and uh, again, it's a stat that came up. The, the, top, the top 10 jobs in information technology or software engineering, top 10 jobs, vacancies that we've got just now, of those top 10, none of them existed five years ago. None of them, right? The whole thing changes, right? You're looking for different skills, more advanced skills, you know, social media's exploded and all those sort of things, right? I, I understand that I, I don't know an industry, you know, I'm asking how can industry help keep, keep education to uh, keep up with the pace of change? It's just phenomenal. And I do think, and I think somebody, one of the, somebody in, in last year's audience said the careers advice ignores the breadth and the diversity of opportunities in IT. And I think people just don't have, uh, don't understand what, what all the types of jobs we have. And I think I'll come on to that later, hopefully. Um, and perhaps it's because Certainly in Scotland IS, we've talked about how do we, should we have, um, should the members, like the, all the companies there, perhaps go and visit their local schools and things like that and have a, a talk to the 40 or 50 or 60 or whatever. Uh, you know, I would encourage, encourage schools, you as teachers, to see who's, who's, what companies are around you, what IT companies are around you, and go and approach them. I bet you, let me know if some of them say no, right? <laughs> I bet you they'd be like that, I'd be happy, right? Um, I have offered it to, to, uh, to a couple of schools. I'd be happy to come along and talk to um, the people who are thinking about a career in IT or even say, well, we don't think about it, come and tell us. I'd be happy to do that. You can tell my uh, presenters that they're going to get them So, what do we need? Right. <coughs> There's a lot. I. Uh, I swear they're here, right? I'm terrified of a couple of things, right? We need, we need to get people's interest, right? We need to get them young, as they say, and hold them. But we don't want to completely uh, turn them off, right? So I think the pie thing in primary schools is a good idea. Up, up to a point, right? Up to a point. We need to, hook, we need to get them hooked on what IT is. But we also quickly need to make them understand it's not just learning to write in basic or whatever, right? Computers a whole pile more than that. We, they do need to understand what program is. I started off as a programmer. The last code, the last line of code I wrote was in 1990. Um, you've got to be able to understand other things, right? You've been able to abstract and solve problems, right? And how to design things. I've got this idea, and again, I was talking to somebody over a cup, over a cup of coffee about giving people Lego bricks, right? Lego bricks are objects, right? And a, a single brick, I mean, a, an eight brick is just eight single bricks joined together, but they're basically the same thing. You know, you can build, you can build them up and you've got, um, in the industry we call things like it's, like, it's like biology, it's like classes, right? The whole world can be defined as a class, right? And then everything's a subclass of that. It's the same in computing. We have classes and objects, right? And Lego bricks actually give you a great little physical representation of that. Give some kids Lego bricks and tell them to go and build something. Understand what a construction is, how, how you can build something from different objects. Software is basically a set of objects out there waiting to be built into something. With a bit of glue in between it, a bit of design, a bit of thought, how many bedrooms, three, how many windows, etc. and all that sort of stuff. That's all it is. It's putting these things together. It's thinking abstractly and solving, um, solving the problems. Uh, I, I talk about that, that structured language. We need people to be able to communicate, right? I hate this. I hate, perhaps I'm wrong and hated it. I hate this geek nerd culture, right? I know it's like, 
you know, people have used the word geek now as a, as a positive word, so perhaps it's, perhaps it's changing, but it can also turn people off that all software programmers should be locked up in a dark room and never, never see the light of day and never talk to a, never talk to a, a customer. That's just rubbish. That's a rubbish. It's not that bad, surely. <laughs> Um, diversity I mentioned, that's the third time I mentioned it, so uh, won't, perhaps it won't be the last time. But uh, I'd also appreciate your thoughts on apprenticeships, right? Um, there's a lot of kids out there, uh, and I, I was at a, a Microsoft uh, uh, seminar, and they introduced this guy, a West Lothian guy, who went through their apprenticeship scheme. Uh, and it's quite interesting. We're starting, we've just interv interviewed our first three, and we're going to just try and work it out. It's, it's not a social experiment, we just want to try this out. Uh, there, there's kids out there, uh, and this guy had, um, he was only doing one hire, he was in higher physics, right? And, um, not, and nothing else. So he eventually left school uh, in February or something like that. <coughs> uh, and he, he had a couple of dead end jobs, and then he found this, um, he found this. Um, uh, training course that Microsoft set up, and now he's working uh, on the frontline help desk for a company. And that might be something we would look at to take kids in who might aren't going to get to university, right? Perhaps have got a couple of, you know, reasonable hires or looking for physics or maths or something like that. We could try and take them on and grow them again, interested to know what what what, ed what how education thinks about this. Uh, we can take them, basically they could spend four or five years with us as if they were going through a university course and they come out the other end. Yes, they might start off on a help desk. You move from a help desk on to helping uh, solve bugs and programs. You move on from solving bugs and programs to writing programs. And then the world's your oyster. Because this, this, is, this is a worldwide industry. No bones about it. <coughs> English is the language of the software industry. If you can prove that you're a half decent programmer, you can go anywhere you like in the world. Australia, America, state, wherever. Tons of things open to you, right? We don't need, I don't need people to come out of university. I don't care what language they've learned. It, honestly, it could be C Sharp, it could be Java, it could be Ada, Pascal, Algo W, for, for those that are old enough to remember all those languages. I don't care, right? We need people who can abstract and solve problems who know how to design and who can communicate, right? That's the important thing, right? We, I can't remember, I think Glasgow teaches Java as, as their language, and another university teaches C Sharp, right? They're slightly different languages, right? But the guys are intelligent enough, they've been taught well enough by you guys and by the individuals, <coughs> they can pick up languages like that, right? It's, languages aren't the important thing here, it's how you, how you work logically and how you solve it. Okay. That's what we need. Comes down to this thing called creative and computational thinking, right? We, we need to get that into people, right? Uh, it's just applying the way that you would develop a, a program to everyday life and things like that. So these words are all throughout our images now: agile, free-flowing, dynamic, looking at data, organizational model, and be able to extract, abstract back from the problem give you the bigger picture and things like that. Teach these kids how to do that and we're brilliant for the industry, right? At the same time, remember that you have to, give them, have to make sure they're hooked onto computing by giving them some exposure to programming through pies or, or, or whatever. I think it's important. I think this is a, a, a good way forward. It's just basically problem solving in a different way. Right, so what are the opportunities? Well, as I said, uh, we're, in, we're in the middle of a digital revolution, and it's, it's just accelerating every year. You've got a chance to build the future, basically, right? I know there's a lot of people out there who say that an engineer never, never did anything. It's all these guys you see on TV. Well, you look at Steve Jobs and Sergey, uh, what's his name, Sergey, the second name now, guy who invented Google, mm -hmm. and you've got the guy who did face, Facebook and all that. These guys are all software engineers, right? There's plenty of things out there. There's brilliant. Uh, brilliant careers out there. You can be a programmer, yes, but you can also be a business analyst. You can be a um, project manager, a program manager. We've got, we've got guys running multi-million pound projects, right? And you know, at one point, they will be guys sitting higher computing at some point. You move on. Our industry is di diverse enough to take in a lot of different skill sets and use them, whether it's in programming or development, 
we actually use, we occasionally use a company called Specialist Stern. They, they, they have, um, uh, they've got autistic testers, right? Because these guys are completely and naturally focused on that problem and they will test it to death, right? So th there's tons of opportunities for, for people of all skills to get involved. <laughs> yes, but we need to encourage them. We need to encourage these people. We can't be talking, we can't be teaching these people Excel and work. We need to get on with different things and stepping up our game, right? <coughs> Don't turn them off, right? Let's get into creative computing. It's the way of the future, at least as far as I'm concerned. You'd be glad this is, I think this is fine. Oh, yeah, this is it, this is the last one, right? So the industrial age needed the three R's, reading, and writing, and arithmetic, as I say, right? We moved on a bit. We need creative computation, abstract thinking, communication, and learning. We want the brightest and the best, right? And there's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't have it. And, uh, I want you guys to do this half, right? I want you to inspire and teach, okay? We'll do the other bit. We'll employ and train. I think that's really important. You're the guys who are going to inspire them. I I'm happy to help. I think industry would be happy to help. We'll do the employment and then move them on from there into different, you know, different skill sets and different careers. It's the only way it's going to work as far as I'm concerned. That's it. That's my, that's my email address. Uh, I do have a, a Twitter one as well. It's just, it's just my name with the at in front of it. Don't, but my tweets talk about daft things like football and going to the pub and stuff like that. Which, yeah, okay. I don't know what you thought of it. I don't know if it's what you were thinking. I think you've got an industry out there that's absolutely receptive to talking to you guys, right? An industry who wants to mold what comes out. An industry, an industry that's growing, right? A short of people is growing and can offer really well paid jobs in the central belt of Scotland and you know and it's something that Scotland should be very proud of our, our education and heritage. You know, we had people you know we did a lot in the Industrial Revolution. There's absolutely no reason on earth why we couldn't be the same thing in the digital revolution. That's all I'm going to say.
So, uh, uh, so how do, uh, okay, so my question to you guys is how do we influence that? I, I, I don't know, I mean, uh, I think there's a flip, right? So Scott IS tries the political side, so we do a bit of lobbying. There's, a, uh, there's this uh, eSkills UK reports come out that said there's a shortage. Skills Development Scotland knows there's a shortage, right? So, I don't know, I don't know how we... There was a question here first, sorry. I was just going to say, what about media campaign? A media campaign that let people know in Scotland that there is a, a, a land of, that, you know, that there's my, uh, right. great demand for these skills, but... but, but my, my, uh, I'd, be, I'd be jailed for my comments on the media, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the media in Scotland, it's like a whole pile of outlines saying that they just do not know, right, what, what the software engine, what computers are about, right? Because if... We, we, we run some big projects, we try and get them advertised, right? And all they're interested in is like, eh, how, how much is it worth and does it employ anybody? But if there was a health issue, we could do something to let people know that it's a oh, yes. thing. It's just a matter of getting Yes, if 27% of schools didn't teach maths, do you think, they, you think they'd be saying, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> of course, it's because it's that sort of thing. Sorry. Yeah, you talked about um, head, well, people not understanding the business of my heads are, are guilty of that. It's, it's heads who are making a lot of the decisions that are closing down computing departments. So furthermore, I think universities are struggling to get yes. through it, and a number of companies I've spoken to, Skyscanner, Venus Startups, are struggling. They cannot get enough, yeah. they cannot get enough uh, computer science graduates yeah. from Scotland. None of us can. Um, but I think what needs to happen is that students will say to me, why should I do higher computing? I don't need it to do a CS degree. And that is, is quite a hard sell. So what you tell them is that, yeah, I've had former pupils coming back to me and say, X is in my course and they haven't done higher computing and they're really, really struggling. So that's the message you put over. But what we need is for when careers advisors look at the UCAS Scottish list, which is the, there are two columns that are the, the subjects that the grades you need and the, the recommended as well, the, the, the essential and desirable columns, Computer science, uh, computer science from school higher needs to be, in, at the very least, that desirable call, and it isn't just now. And I realise that the, the brilliant university staff who are here helping us today, they're not the ones that make those decisions, you know, that it's made at a different level of university. But universities need to embrace that and make computing, that would raise the profile of computing in schools as well. It would be a win-win situation. But the other problem, as I mentioned, uh, I'm not mentioning university, but one of the guys said to me, we've got 125 spaces in our first year. And I said, I'm three lessons in mine in 1975. Right? And I showed you a punch card picture. That, I used punch cards in this university in 1975. Life's changed a wee bit, right? So, and, and yet we've got three lessons in a major central belt university. Right? And I heard other rumors <coughs> in other universities that, because the cost of teaching computer science you can teach sports, you can teach three sports science graduates, and no offense to anybody here, for the price of one computer science. So guess where you're gonna get the money from? And that's mental. The other thing is, first you didn't take, 35% of them had UK passport uh, holders. 65% of them abroad because of where the money comes. Yes. Okay folks, um, I'd like uh, to thank Alistair for his time. Really